So this is a um, an additional information about external assessment factor. So external assessment refers to economical, social, cultural, demographical, environmental, political, legal, governmental, technological, and competitive trends and events that could significantly benefit or harm an organization in the future. Examples are computer revolution, biotechnology, population shifts, changing work values and attitudes, space exploration, recyclable packages, increased competition for, from local competitors, increased competition from foreign competi competition, etc. So this type of changes are creating a different type of consumer and consequently a need for different types of products, services, and strategies. So changes in external forces translate into changes in customer demand for both industrial and consumer products and services. It affects the segmentation, target, and positioning of the products. It affects the type of products developed, the nature of the positioning and market segmentation strategies, and the type of services offered, and the choice of business to acquire or sell. So, there are key external factors to achieve external assessment. So, we have achieving long-term and annual objectives. It should be measurable and it should be applicable to all competing firms. Hierarchical, in the sense that same will pertain to the overall company and others, will be more narrowly focused on functional and divisional areas. And we also have the PESTE approach and the competitive forces or Porter's Five Forces model. So these six are key external factors to achieve external assessment. So under PESTE approach, uh, we have politico or legal forces or political forces. Politico pertains to government and legal pertains to law. For industries and firms that depends heavily on government contracts or subsidies, political forces can be most important on internal audit. Changes in patent law, antitrust, legislation, tax rate, and lobbying activities. For the economic forces, changes are more on interest rates, taxation, availability of interest, inflation rates, PNP or gross national product, GDP or gross domestic product, unemployment trends, stock market trends, import-export factors, income differences by regions, consumer groups, and price fluctuations. For the socio-cultural and demographic forces, it's more on uh, changes on child-bearing rates, number of special interest groups, number of marriages or divorces, number of births or deaths, average level of education, sex roles, pollution control, attitudes toward product quality, number of churches, number of members, recycling, waste management, etc. For the technological forces, revolutionary technological changes and discoveries are having a dramatic impact on organization. Example here is internet. Technological forces also changes the life cycle of products. It increases the speed of distribution, creating new products or services, erasing limitation of traditional geographical market, and changing the historical trade-off between production standardization and flexibility for the environmental or natural forces those are facts such as those that follow and exemplify our need to do as much as we can preserve rather than harm the environment for the competitive forces or porters by forces model we have first one is we have the rivalry among competing firms Rivalry among competing firms is usually the most powerful of the five competitive forces. The strategies pursued by one firm can be successful only to the extent that they can provide competitive advantage over the strategies pursued by rival firms. 
Next is we have the potential entry of new competitors. So whenever new firms can easily enter a particular industry, the intensity of competitiveness among firms increases. Barriers to entry can include the need to gain economies to scale quickly, the need to gain technology that specialized know-how, the lack of experiences, strong customer loyalty, strong brand preferences, and large capital requirements. Potential entry of new competitors also uh, happen when there is a lack of adequate distribution channels, government regulatory policies, tariffs, lack of access to raw materials, possession of patents, undesirable location, counterattack by retrenched firms and potential saturation of the market. Potential development of substitute products. The presence of substitute products puts a ceiling on the price that can be charged before consumers will switch the substitute products. Price ceilings equate to profit ceiling and more intense competition among rivals. Number four is the bargaining powers of consumer. When customers are concentrated at large or buy in volume, their bargaining power represents a major force affecting the intensity of competition in an industry. So, rival firms may offer extended warranties or special services to gain customer loyalty. Number five is the bargaining powers of suppliers. So, the bargaining powers of suppliers affects the intensity of competition in an industry, especially when there is a large number of suppliers, when there are few good substitute materials, or when the cost of switching materials is too costly. So, it is often the best interest of both suppliers and producers to assist each other with reasonable prices, improve quality development of new service, just-in-time deliveries, and reduce inventory costs, thus enhancing long-term profitability for all concerned. According to Fred R. David on bargaining powers of suppliers, firms may pursue a backward integration, strategy to gain control of ownership of suppliers. The strategy is especially effective when suppliers are unreliable, too costly, or not capable of meeting a firm's need or consistent basis. Firms generally can negotiate more favorable terms with suppliers when backward integration is commonly used as strategy among rival firms in an industry. Anyway, backward integration is part of the strategies that um, we'll discuss under Module 4. Okay. For me, the only way to do it is competitive advantage. It should create value creation with cost-benefit and depreciation advantage. So, for the external factors, we have the EFE matrix or what we call as external evaluation factor or EFE matrix. Uh, it is a strategy tool used to examine companies' external environment and used to examine companies' external environment to identify the available opportunities and threats. So, how to compute? Uh, you can create uh, all external activities such as uh, opportunities, O1 up to O10 or etc. On how many opportunity, opportunities that you get from, from the company that you have been uh, analyzed. And then, you weight all, all of this into 1 or 100%. So, you can weight it uh, depends upon uh, the, uh, how you see the opportunities that you get from the, from the company. And then, on the second, uh, on the second uh, column, you can read it from 4, 3, up to 1. So, 4 is superior, 3 is above average, 2 is average, and 1 is poor. So, and then you multiply the two columns, and then after getting the average, the average, the total average or total weighted score should be at least 2.5 to make the company have a approachable or gainable TFE matrix. Okay, next is we can compute also the CPM matrix. It will tell you where you are right now. It will tell you about your company's internal and external assessment. 
it opened value innovation and to extract the important factor with regards to competitors. CPM matrix also assimilate and evaluate information in meaningful way. So how you compute it? So competitive profile matrix or CPM is a tool that compares. So you compare the companies or the your company and the rival company. It compares the firm and its rival and reveals their relative strength and weaknesses in order to better understand the external environment and the competition in a particular industry. How you do that? You can do the competition the same as EFT and IFT uh, matrix do by multiplying it, the, the, the percentage that, that you get from, from the 100% and then you multiply it by the, by the rate that you give to the company or to the rival company from 4, 3, 2, 1. So, this is how you get the CPM matrix. Anyway, we will discuss it um, one by one. Okay, so this is the end of discussion. So, it's under, it's under module 3A. So, this one is more on external assessment. So, I'm just hoping that you understand the lesson. And again, this is from Ching. Bye-bye.